Welcome back with Dave Burrow. It's going to blast through these phone calls. David in Truro, Nova Scotia has a question. Hey, David. Hi, David. Are you there? Chubb. Okay. Uh, property and casualty, great space. If you punch up the ETF, KIE, mm -hmm. it ha it's, the, it's an insurance ETF mm -hmm. in the U.S. Largely, it's property and casualty, and uh, it's just hitting new highs after consolidating sort of since June. Mm -hmm. So this theme is starting to lift, uh, and Chubb is very strong. Property and casualty pricing is strong, profitability is strong, and the rates backdrop is, is supportive. Uh, I, would, I would buy Chubb here. We own Allstate as an alternative. Uh, they're, they're both good companies. Okay, Dave, thank you. Back to the phones. Michael in Burnaby, BC has a question. Hey, Michael. Hi. Uh, my question is on Finning International. Okay. Greg Newman recommended it in the middle of January at $25. Today it dropped uh, over $2 uh, to under $22. Would this be a good time to pick it up? Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to make this one fairly short and sweet. I will never buy something that's that's falling out of bed. Okay, it's just it's just not what we do. There can be things that I don't know that are going on, but the way this stock is behaving against a really strong market, I think you take a lot of risk because uh, if the market starts to weaken, a weak stock gets weaker. Earnings, fourth quarter earnings adjusted uh, EPS missing the lowest estimate. Yeah. Let's get to Dave in Toronto. Hey, Dave. Dave, you there? Hi, how are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? I'm good. Dave, you got to turn the TV off. Yeah. I want to ask about Oracle versus IBM. Okay. Uh, I feel like they're both good value stocks, and I feel that you could invest in them for like right now because the PE is so good versus some of those high flyer Shopify and stuff. So okay. what would you, would you buy Oracle or IBM for the long term? Because I can't buy these very expensive stocks. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Dave. Look, um, there are lots of people who are value investors. Um, I think sometimes you get what you pay for, right? I've never made a lot of money in a value technology stock. Mm -hmm. If a company, if a technology company can't grow, it's hard to imagine how it's going to attract technology investors. And so when you've got a Shopify growing at 47% and beating estimates, and you've got you know, an IBM that's getting smaller, it's hard to get excited. Um, you know, Oracle has its own legacy issues because mm -hmm. everybody wants to be in the cloud and want subscription-based yeah. software. I that was the Red Hat acquisition, I'd, I'd right? I'd rather buy an Oracle that at least is growing than an IBM that is not. Uh, but neither of these would be my first choice. Okay, so it's not either or, it's neither. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard to get excited with, if the sector is in gear and people are going through the list and going pass, 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 why do you want to choose it and think that you're going to get it right and everybody else is getting it wrong? All right, great analysis. Let's uh, squeeze in Dorothy from Toronto, a stock that Dave really wants to talk about. Hey, Dorothy. Hi there. Um, David, you spoke about Nova Gold fairly recently, which is unusual for you with a gold <laughs> stock. But um, it, it's apparently got a wonderful um, discovery in Alaska but it's not a producing mine. It's got no cash flow at this point right. in time. So I'm wondering if you can elaborate why you think this is a top pick versus other gold stocks that do have cash flow. Okay. So let me be clear. To, 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 to set the stage, I am not a gold bug, as people I think know. But I am uh, f uh, in favor of finding sectors that have become hated and that are under-owned and when they start behaving the way you wouldn't expect them to, given what you think you've known. And so the gold group and gold itself, you know, has consolidated very nicely mm -hmm. and has made a good technical turn, mm -hmm. okay? Now I understand because they're, every central bank is pumping liquidity into the system and devaluing currency, it's very possible, like lo lots of reasons to look at gold. Some people look at it, it's just a, a something to own in a catastrophe. Well, or, 
you think that there's going to be some reflation in the economy. And I think that's more the case here. So when I did recommend Nova Gold, I said, I was careful to say, look, our number one holding is Franco Nevada. Franco Nevada is a dividend stock mm -hmm. and it gets a royalty off 160 mines. Mm -hmm. It's a great holding, it's fairly defensive, and it's the classic one of all of them that performed all the way through a week period. However, if you wind up in a market where gold is a, is a leading sector or has an opportunity, you also want you know, to be able to participate it in the way that many gold investors would invest. Nova Gold has arguably the largest undeveloped deposit in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's in a friendly location, it's in Alaska. And they've got a good partner, they've got Barrick. There is definitely risk, but this is not you know, a junior stock with, a, with a dubious asset yeah. and poor partners. Yeah. So I think that, look, this is, again, we're talking about positions within a group of positions that you own. And when we run separately managed accounts, 20 to 25 mm -hmm. positions, 3 to 5% weights. Okay. Okay, All so right. this is one of those positions still that sticking would, with you Nova. can take it, yeah, take advantage of it. All right, there you go. Dave Burroughs, President and Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital Management, telling us how he feels and what he thinks about all these stocks. More calls straight ahead. You're watching Market Call tonight.